Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today we're answering a viewer question. Jessica H asks, what happens to people you hear about who fall over in museums and damage priceless works of art? Do they have to pay any damages? Just before we get into answering Jessica's question, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skills, I believe they are absolutely vital to success in life, whatever that might mean to you personally. And Skillshare, well, it's the easiest way to build skills with unlimited access to over 17,000 courses. It's great, but you do not have to take my word for it. The first 200 viewers to click the link in the description below will get two months of trial for free. All right, so let's get started. All right, so if you've ever been walking through a museum or an art gallery, you might have noticed that a lot of the art and historical treasure on display is completely exposed. In fact, with the exception of some of the world's most famous pieces of art, you could easily just fall over and damage much of the artwork on display around the world. So what exactly would happen if you did trip and damage an irreplaceable piece of art? Well, as it turns out, probably not all that much. This is mainly because of two things. Well, the first is the museums and art galleries almost always have insurance to cover such damage. Second, accidents do happen, and the people running the museums, they totally understand this. In fact, in nearly every case we could find of a piece of artwork accidentally being damaged, no charges were ever pressed by either the museum or, in some cases, the owner of the art in question. In fact, it appears that the worst that might happen in such a scenario is that you get banned from the museum. For example, let's consider the case of Nick Flynn. Now, Nick was a man who, in 2006, tripped over his shoelace while walking around the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge and knocked over three 17th century vases worth about £175,000, which is about $225,000. Flynn notes of the experience, I snagged my shoelace, missed the step, and crash bang wallop. There were a million pieces of high quality Qing ceramics lying around underneath me. Although I knew the vase would break, I didn't imagine it would be loose and crash into the other two. I'm sure I only hit the first one, and they must have flown across the windowsill and hit the next one, which then hit the other, like a set of dominoes. I can say with my hand on my heart that it was not deliberate, just one of those unbelievably unlucky things that can sometimes happen. The museum's official response was merely to send him a letter advising Flynn not to visit the museum again in the near future. Yes, he didn't even technically get banned, just politely asked to abstain from visiting for a while. In fact, the museum didn't even identify Flynn to the public to spare him the embarrassment of being known as the guy who tripped and knocked over three vases that, before encountering Mr. Flynn, had managed to survive about four centuries and six full decades sitting on those very windowsills. We actually only know his name today because the British tabloids went and tracked him down. In another example, this one from 2015, a 12-year-old boy tripped over while visiting a Taiwanese art exhibition. During his fall forward, he managed to punch a hole through a 350-year-old painting. This painting was Flowers by Paula Porpora, valued at about $1.5 million. The organizers of the exhibition went out of their way to assure the boy and his family that they wouldn't be liable to pay any damages nor get in any trouble legally. In fact, one of the organizers publicly insisted that the boy wasn't to blame. In Yet another case in 2010, a young woman, who, as per usual with these sorts of things, went unnamed publicly, damaged a $130 million Picasso painting. This painting was called The Actor, and the young woman fell into it during an art class. The result was a six inch tear in the lower right hand corner. In this specific case, the museum officials were more concerned with reporting that the woman was uninjured than the fact that her accident had potentially wiped away half the painting's value. Alright, so we've covered pure accidents, and it seems like the repercussions, they're not too bad. But what about negligent cases? All evidence, interestingly, would seem to indicate that museums and galleries are similarly hesitant to do anything to the patron in question. Beyond countless selfie-related accidental destruction of art that has become something of a frequent occurrence in recent years, there is the case of a clock made by artist James Borden that hung in Columbia, Pennsylvania's National Watch and Clock Museum for over two decades before being destroyed. So how exactly did it meet its end? Well, an elderly couple began touching and pulling on its various bits seemingly trying to see what the clock looked like when working. This ultimately caused the clock to come crashing down. The museum they chose not to press charges nor seek any compensation for the damages. In fact, as in other examples, they didn't even berate the individuals in the press, choosing not to even name them at all. 
That said, we did find one exception to this. This happened when a tourist scaled a facade of a Portuguese train station to take a selfie with an 1890 statue of Dom Sebastião, resulting in the statue's destruction when said tourist accidentally knocked the statue over and it shattered on the grounds below. The unnamed man was later charged with destruction of public property. As for the non-public, even in cases where museum or art gallery staff damage or destroy the art, the individual usually gets off with only a slap on the wrist if it was truly an honest accident. For example, in 2000, some porters at the Bond Street auction house accidentally put a painting by artist Lucian Freud, valued at £100,000, which is about $130,000, into a crushing machine. The painting was stored in a large wooden box, which the porters assumed was empty, and they put it out with the rest of the trash. The auction house ensured that the porters wouldn't leave their jobs over the matter, as it was just an honest mistake. In another case, an unnamed cleaning lady tossed a bunch of modern art valued at about $15,000 into the garbage in 2014. To be fair to the cleaning lady, the so-called art in question was created by modernist Paul Branca, and it was a bunch of cardboard boxes haphazardly strewn across the floor of a section of the gallery. Again, no action was taken against the cleaner. We can only hope that Mr. Branca was on his game that day, and he simply took the opportunity to go full meta on it, displaying his former cardboard box art now in the garbage bin, perhaps even increasing its value somewhat. Modern art, everybody. All that said, while it appears most museums, galleries, and even artists will take the destruction or damage of their work in good humor if done accidentally, even if there was a fair bit of negligence involved, the same can't be said if the damage is malicious. In these cases, the museum can and will press charges, and one could even expect a bit of jail time. For instance, in the aforementioned vase smashing story, sometime later there was some thought that Flynn had smashed the vases on purpose for the publicity of it, given his going out of his way to give interviews about it and some of his comments therein. Despite that the museum had so carefully avoided assigning any blame or mentioning his name. As a result, he was eventually detained for a night, though noted he was treated very well while under arrest, with the police simply trying to determine if he'd done it on purpose. Once they decided that it had indeed been an accident, he was let go with no further consequences. In another instance, one Andrew Shannon punched a Monet painting worth about £7 million, which is about $9 million. He later claimed that he tripped and fell and it was an accident, but security footage clearly showed him intentionally punching the painting. When he was detained by security guards, a can of paint stripper was also found in his pocket. He was given a five-year prison sentence. So this brings us to perhaps the obvious question that surrounds all of this, and that's why why is such valuable and often irreplaceable art stored in such a way that people can simply walk up to it and damage it, whether accidentally or not? Well, one reason is simply cost. Placing every painting, sculpture, and fresco behind protective glass or under careful watch of a burly guard is very expensive. Contrary to the value of the pieces they sometimes contain, museums and art galleries often aren't swimming in money. A second, and perhaps more important reason, is that it would disrupt the experience of viewing the art in question. Ensuring that the art can be properly appreciated is of tantamount importance to those who run museums and galleries. It's noted that said institutions have to constantly strike a balance between keeping works of art accessible to the public and protecting them at the same time. Such a balance necessitates a degree of trust to be placed in the public, not to pour at the priceless works of art on display and to otherwise be careful around them. Perhaps the most famous example of a piece of art being damaged maliciously is the time a man called Piero Canata attacked Michelangelo's David with a hammer, breaking off the statue's toe. Prior to Canata's attack, visitors were free to walk right up to the statue to appreciate it up close. Afterwards, it was placed behind a protective glass screen. So I really hope you enjoyed that video so far, and just before we get into the bonus facts, I do want to say a quick word about our sponsor Skillshare. So if you want to create your own piece of art that will one day get destroyed in a museum by a klutz, well, you need Skillshare. Pretty smooth transition, right? Well, as I mentioned at the top of the video, Skillshare, it's an online learning community with more than 17,000 courses. And yes, this video actually demonstrates the wide range of courses that Skillshare have available because they have from fine art to neural networks and from sculpting to programming. It's a huge range of courses. Now, there are lots of learning platforms out there, but what is so great about Skillshare is that you can dive into any course at any time for just $10 a month. No buying individual courses just to see a part of it, and no limits on what you can watch and learn. But don't take my word for how great it is. You can get two months for free if you go to the link in the description below. First 200 people, that is. Two months for free. Follow the link in the description below. What have you got to lose? You'll love it. All right, so let's get into those bonus facts. In 2012, a fishbowl personally painted and signed by Orson Welles belonging to conservative firebrand Glenn Beck, was irreparably damaged by a cleaner who assumed the ball was dirty. Contrary to his fiery personality on air, Beck forgave the cleaner, 
stating, I can't be pissed at her because here's somebody who wants to go above and beyond. Here's somebody who wants to do the right thing, somebody who saw a fishbowl that looks like it hadn't been cleaned since 1940 and took it and washed it. Scrubbed, scrubbed the signature, scrubbed all the little fishes, scrubbed it all. And now for another bonus fact. It appears that insurers will cough up to pay for damage to art even if the person who damages it is the owner themselves. As famously happened with casino magnate Steve Wynn after he drove his elbow through a $139 million painting by Picasso while gesturing towards it. After a few months in court, Wynn's insurance did eventually pay up. Wynn later sold the painting for more than it had been valued at prior to the damage. And now for another bonus fact. Speaking of modern art, there is a definite trend of avant-garde modern artists creating pieces mostly made up of literal trash that gets accidentally thrown away by cleaners. Among the many examples of this that we found in researching this piece includes the case of Damien Hirst, the shark in the formaldehyde guy. In 2001, a work of art consisting of pieces of actual trash strategically placed around a room containing other of his works was thrown away by a janitor identified only as Mr. Assair. Assair thought that it was just leftover trash from the opening party the night before. Said Assair, I didn't think for a second that it was a work of art. It didn't look much like art to me, so I cleared it all into bin bags and dumped it. Upon hearing about this, Hearst was reported as finding the whole thing hilarious. A critic of Hearst's work was later quoted as saying, The cleaner obviously ought to be promoted to an art critic of a national newspaper. He clearly has a fine critical eye and can spot rubbish. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to visit the link in the description below to try Skillshare for free. And as always, thank you for watching.